love, S.T. Coleridge. The speaker remembers fondly the time he wooed and won his sweet lady through artful playing and storytelling. Love. All thoughts, all passions, all delights, whatever stirs this mortal frame, all are but ministers of love and feed his sacred flame. Oft in my waking dreams do I live o'er again that happy hour, when midway on the mount I lay beside the ruined tower. The moonshine stealing o'er the scene had blended with the lights of eve, and she was there my hope, my joy, my own dear Gwen of Genevieve. She leaned against the armed man, the statue of the armed knight. She stood and listened to my lay amid the lingering light. Few sorrows hath she of her own, my hope, my joy, my Genevieve. She loves me best whene'er I sing the songs that make her grieve. I played a soft and doleful air. I sang an old and moving story, an old rude song that suited well that wild, ruin wild and hoary. She listened with a flitting blush, with downcast eyes and modest grace, for well she knew I could not choose but gaze upon her face. I told her of the knight that wore upon his shield a burning brand, and that for ten long years he wooed the lady of the land. I told her how he pined, and ah, the deep, the low, the pleading tone, with which I sang another's love interpreted my own. She listened with a flitting blush, with downcast eyes and modest grace, and she forgave me that I gazed too fondly on her face. But when I told the cruel scorn that crazed that bold and lovely knight, and that he crossed the mountain woods, nor rested day nor night, that sometimes from the savage den, and sometimes from the darksome shade, and sometimes starting up at once in green and sunny glade, there came and looked him in the face an angel beautiful and bright, and that he knew it was a fiend, this miserable knight, and that unknowing what he did, he leaped amid a murderous band, and saved from outrage worse than death the lady of the land. And how she wept and clasped his knees, and how she tended him in vain, and ever strove to expiate the scorn that crazed his brain. And that she nursed him in a cave, and how his madness went away, when on the yellow forest leaves a dying man he lay. His dying words, but when I reached that tenderest strain of all the ditty, my faltering voice and pausing harp disturbed her soul with pity. All impulses of soul and sense had thrilled my guileless Genevieve, the music and the doleful tale, the rich and balmy eve, and hopes and fears that kindle hope, an undistinguishable throng, and gentle wishes long subdued, subdued and cherished long. She wept with pity and delight, she blushed with love and virgin shame, and like the murmur of a dream, I heard her breathe my name. Her bosom heaved, she stepped aside, as conscious of my look she stepped, then suddenly with timorous eye, she fled to me and wept. She half enclosed me with her arms, she pressed me with a meek embrace, and bending back her head looked up and gazed upon my face. Twas partly love, and partly fear, and partly twas a bashful art, that I might rather feel than see the swelling of her heart. I calmed her fears, and she was calm, and told her love with virgin pride, and so I won my Genevieve, my bright and beauteous 